Hi guys and welcome to my garden. We are first week of July and there have been so many changes in my garden since my last garden tour in late May and I can't wait to show you. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Emilia and I garden in zone 6B, high desert climate and this is my second season gardening in this space. So the garden is still very new but there's still a lot to see. So let's go inside and take a look. So here is the garden. This year we prepared nine beds for growing vegetables. We also have fruit trees growing in this garden, but we didn't plant them. They came with the property. In the first bed, I have a lot of things going on. So we have calendula growing and we also have chamomile. I harvested a lot of chamomile flowers already. Uh, the plants are just loaded with flowers and I will keep harvesting them throughout the season. We also have lettuce growing still, but it's just getting hot and it's about to bolt. So I'm just gonna let it bolt and I like flowers and also I want to save seeds from this lettuce because it performs so well in the garden. We ate a lot of lettuce from this bed. And this is a cilantro that went to seed and I absolutely adore cilantro flowers and so do all the pollinators. I'm not sure if the camera can capture all the pollinator action, little bees and wasps. But I also like uh, cilantro seeds, which cilantro seeds are actually coriander spice. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but there are already seeds forming. So, um, so yeah, it's a very nice plant to have in the garden and I just can't believe all this pollinator action. I hope the camera will capture it. And in the back, we have a uh, radish that also went to seed. Uh, I will be collecting some uh, seed pods for cooking. It, they have very good flavor, but also I like the flowers and so do pollinators. This year, I tried to experiment with new plants. And this is one of them. This is a uh, stevia and it is, it is a sweetener. I don't really use a lot of additional sugar in my food but I just wanted to try it out and again the pollinators on the cilantro plant just so amazing and here we have some beets growing and some zinnia flowers that I just planted recently and the parsley Parsley is doing very well and that makes me very happy because I use a lot of parsley uh, in cooking. And here we have dill. Dill is doing so well but it went to seed already. There are some dill flowers still and I'm not sure if I can capture it, but I'll do my best and all the pollinators. Dill is another plant that pollinators adore and it attracts all the beneficial insects. Uh, and I use dill flowers for uh, dill pickles and I planted more dill because I want more dill. And here are some uh, flowers growing just for some interest. And the mustard plant went to seed as well and it has beautiful yellow flowers and I will be saving those seeds. And in the far end of the first bed we have potatoes. These are all my extras that I just ran out of room in the main potato bed that we're gonna see later on in the tour. Uh, these are the fingerling potatoes, long season, so they will be in this bed for quite some time. And behind me uh, there is peach tree growing and already it has fruits not ready for harvest but they are big and it's actually quite a bit of them. I didn't do any thinning because we have chipmunks and do, they do the thinning for us and here are the other two trees and what I really wanted to show you guys it's the currant bush it's loaded with currants and Robins like them, we love them, we eat them fresh, but you can also preserve them, make jam, 
and the plant is just loaded with fruit and this is already after us harvesting for this whole entire week and on the bottom of the plant there is still a lot of clusters that we have to harvest or otherwise the birds will which is fine we share <laughs> oh here is our rhubarb it's not in its prime we already harvested some and the rhubarb really likes cool weather so this is getting too hot so it's about to enter dormancy and the next bed we have garlic and it's also almost ready to be harvested and you can tell when the garlic is ready by just looking at its leaves if you see yellowing tips it's not ready yet but if you see that the bottom leaves are starting to dry out in this case one first leaf started to dry out then then it's time so i think we have another week or two before we can harvest but it's getting close and actually let's harvest one together so we can see how big the bulbs are whoa it's so big i couldn't be happier um, I will most likely eat it fresh, so I won't cure it um, because I just can't wait to see how good it tastes. But yeah, I think we're gonna have amazing garlic, garlic harvest if all the bulbs look like this. I will put this guy down and uh, let's head over to where the leeks are growing. So here are my leeks. And I'm using I'm I'm using a deep mulch method with with the leeks, and the, just like with potatoes, and the reason is because because this is the part that you eat, and in order for the stem to be tender, it has to be blocked from sun, so it remains white, and that makes the stem just taste better than the th that than if it turns green. So in order to make sure that it's black from sun, I just cover, I just keep covering the stems with mulch. And the leeks are pretty healthy, pretty big. They just take a long time to mature. And before we move on to our next bed, I want to show you guys my grapevine. This grapevine is just huge. I pruned it so much in the early spring, late winter, that I thought that maybe I did prune it too much, but I think I did not prune it enough. And let me see if I can find grapes forming. I think I see. There you go. So we're gonna have grapes. If birds won't eat them before us. Yeah, there's so many birds here, um, but the, the, the vine is loaded with fruit, so I'm sure we're gonna get some too. In the next bed, we have potatoes. Some of them are already flowering and some of them are not. I absolutely love potato flowers. They, they almost look like ornamental plant that someone just could plant for decoration. And some plants have white flowers and some plants have purple flowers and even pink flowers. So they look absolutely beautiful. The ones that are flowering, that means that they're already forming tubers. And these are the early maturing varieties. So they will be ready for harvest pretty soon. But the ones that are not flowering yet, like for example, these guys, it means that they either mid season or late season varieties. So they have to stay in the ground for a little bit longer. But this whole bed is just filled with potatoes. And to mulch all my beds, I use hay that I collected from my property. So I know that it's free of herbicides. And hay is just such a good way to mulch. Plants love it, beneficial soil microbes love the cover. Um, and as it decomposes, it returns all the nutrients to the soil. And this bed is filled with onions. I'm growing a few different varieties of onions. In my first garden tour, they looked so puny and I was worrying that they might not survive, but most of them survived and they got 
much bigger. They produce a lot of leaves and that makes me very happy. Like this guy right here, I actually had to trim the leaves because they were the plant was getting too heavy and I was afraid that it's gonna break before the bulb forms. So if you have to trim the leaves, then you can use the leaf as as you would normally use green onion, so nothing goes to waste. I don't think the bulb is forming yet, although it's close. We finished our irrigation project, so all the beds have uh, drip tapes installed, um, but it took us a while to figure out how much we actually need to water because uh, irrigation is new to us and I think we got to figure out. So every bed has irrigation uh, tapes connected to it and the main pipe is underground. That's why it was a pretty big project. But it's, it's so wonderful not to have to hand water, at, at least not in this climate. We have very dry summers. And in the next bed, we have a lot going on. It is, it used to be a brassicas bed where we were growing just cabbage and cauliflower, but I planted all my extra tomatoes in this bed. So I created another row of tomatoes and they're doing well. I have to still install a trellis for them, but the cabbage is doing well. Um, we have some caterpillar damage, but for the most, oh, I see one right here that I will actually move to the outer leaf. I don't want it. I don't want it to eat my head of cabbage. So I don't know if we're gonna have good harvest because of all the caterpillar damage. I know I'm noticing that they leave the red cabbage alone for the most part. I mean, for the most part, there's still caterpillar damage but not as much as on the white cabbage. So they definitely favor the white cabbage, at least in my garden. Um, I don't want to spray with anything or use the very popular thing to use is BT, which is a bacteria that makes caterpillars stop eating, therefore they starve. I don't really want to do that. That's a, that sounds like something that would not bring me joy. But next year I may be um, going to use insect netting. But I think I will still get some harvest despite of all the caterpillars. Oh, they really like this one. Look at all these holes. Uh, I'm probably not going to get a good harvest out of this variety. But I'm really hopeful that the red cabbage will will actually form a nice head. It's so big. And the tomatoes, these are all my extras. So they are the weakest out of the bunch, but they are really put on some growth too. And I'm also growing cauliflower. The purple cauliflower is already ready to be harvested. So let's actually harvest it together. So the way you harvest cauliflower, you just cut off the head, which is actual a flower, and you do it kind of, you can, as low as you can, because the stem is actually edible too. Uh, so let me just cut this off. There you go. Yay, how beautiful it is. I absolutely love the color. And also with purple cauliflowers, they are also healthier. They have more antioxidants than the regular cauliflower. So I will have this for dinner tonight. And actually what's interesting about cauliflowers that if you let the plant continue growing, you will have little offshoots. Uh, so you will have actually more cauliflower. The cauliflower won't be as big as this one, but, uh, but still it's gonna be food. So if you have nothing to replace, the cauliflower that was growing in the space that you just harvested, just leave it and you will get more food. All right, let me place this guy down and let's continue on. And the next thing that we have growing in this bed are artichokes. This is the first time I'm growing artichokes and I heard that they, in order for them to flower, they have to be put through cold period. I started them from seeds very early and put them outside when it was still cold. So hopefully 
Hopefully they will produce flower this year. If not next year, I'll try to overwinter them. And the last thing in this bed is a volunteer potato. Oh, and one more cauliflower to harvest. I will harvest it tomorrow though. And the volunteer potato is, I'm not sure what the variety that is, but I just let it grow. And it looks like there is one more cauliflower. I really have to pay attention. And because once they split, you can still eat them, but they're not gonna, but they're gonna have different texture. And the next bed is my bed that I'm the most excited about. This is my tomato pepper basil bed. Uh, let me get a farther shot on the trellis system that I'm using. So the trellis system for tomatoes that I'm using is it's made out of electrical conduit and it's very it's very strong. It lasts for a very long time and easy to install. And let's take a look at the tomatoes. So I'm growing a lot of different varieties and in order to fit a lot of tomatoes in one bed, I am pruning them to one main stem for the most part, like this guy right here. Um, and what I do to come transplant time, when I'm transplanting them, I bury the uh, string and with the plant so that way I can just attach it to the top of the trellis right there and as the plant is growing all I have to do is just weave it through like in this example all I have to do is just weave it through and it's so easy to maintain and then if I see side branches forming I just remove them just because well this one got away from me so I'm gonna have to put another I have to tie another string because I will probably keep this guy. A lot of tomatoes are already fruits, like this is Thornsburn terracotta that already has tomatoes. Well, this one is splitting, so I think I'm gonna remove this guy. But this one right here, this is a new variety that I'm trying out this year. It is called, I forgot. Um, I will put it on the screen, but it looks like the fruit is almost ready and it has it has a lot of new flowers and so is this one this is a cherry tomato so they always first to produce in my garden um, but yeah a lot of fruits and a lot of flowers so i'm very excited and this one is also just a cherry tomato is is black cherry and i can already see fruit so it would take me a long time to go over all the tomatoes that I'm growing, I will be doing a separate video just focusing on tomatoes and how they're doing, but I will show you one more. This one is uh, blueberries um, variety and look how thick the stem is. It's absolutely amazing. Let me just weave it through while I'm here because it puts some new growth and also I'm growing a lot of peppers and basil. This one is called Queen and produces very beautiful flowers and it also tastes very good. And I'm growing a lot of hot peppers. This one is called Buena Mulata and th those are so good to dry and preserve. And one of my favorite uh, peppers, it's called the Violeta Sparkle. It's a variety that produces very early in the season and grows very compact. And the fruit kind of tastes like pineapple when it's not fully ripened. And then when it fully ripens, it tastes like very, very sweet pepper. <laughs> so I like to grow it. But I have so many different varieties here that it would take me a very long time to, to name all of them. Uh, but I'm going, I'm growing combination of sweet and hot peppers. And I use tomato cages for all the peppers that get tall. And of course, I also have kale growing. I just did not hard to pull it. It just produces so well, even though it's kind of hot already. Um, but I will just let it be for the time being. 
I still we still harvest it and eat it, use it uh, with smoothies and also saute it. So I will, as long as it doesn't shade the peppers, I will let it stay. But in front we have pretty much just peppers growing and and tomatoes and more kale. Oh, one more tomato that I wanted to show you. This one is Napa Chardonnay. It has such good delicious fruit and it's already ready to harvest. And I've already actually harvested a couple fruits from this plant and it has more flowers. The next bed, we have strawberries growing. I also applied a lot of mulch for the strawberries. Uh, they were the June bearing strawberries, so they are done producing. And we also have tomatoes growing in this bed. So this bed is filled with tomatoes. They're growing in two rows. I still have to install trellis. I will install the same trellis like in this bed and we'll do it this week because they are getting taller and taller and they need support, especially this guy right here. It's getting very tall. And here we go. This is Sasha Altai, uh, early maturing variety that the fruit is almost ready to be harvested. Well, maybe a couple more days. The bed along the fence is still a work in progress. I filled it with all the to extra tomatoes that I had and all the extra peppers that are tiny. So I, I have to still take care of this bed. At the end of the bed, I planted zucchini squash and cucumbers, but they're still, they're still tiny. Well, this one put on some growth and this is melon. I actually bought a start and the watermelon is right here, but it's so puny. The extra tomatoes that I planted in this bed, these are the determinate tomatoes, early maturing tomatoes. So I think I will have to use a tomato cage um, because I don't think they will utilize this fence really because they grow, they're very compact. You're not supposed to prune them. So they kind of grow like a bush as opposed to like a tree, like tomatoes in this bed. Uh, but speaking of the terminate tomatoes that, that are not compact, let me show you my last bed that I made, especially for the terminate tomatoes that are huge and deserve a, sp a separate bed. So this is the tomato bed that I designated just for a determinate tomatoes that don't have compact growth habit. So with determinate tomatoes, it's actually kind of interesting because some determinate tomatoes are very compact. So you can easily use that tomato cage uh, to help them grow. But some to determinate tomato varieties, like for example, this one, black semen, or this one right here, mushroom basket, they get huge. So the tomato cage would not work with these guys. What would happen, they would just grow outside of the cage like an octopus, bring the tomato cage to the ground because they just get so big. So just that wouldn't work. So what I do instead, I, I have separate bed for the guys that get so big and I cannot prune because the terminate tomatoes you're not supposed to prune. And I try to give them some support. So in this case, I have this fence that I'm using to tie some of the branches as they get bigger. But the reality is this will not be enough and eventually they will just cover this whole entire bed, which I'm okay with because that's how they grow, that's how they want to grow. And that way they will actually produce the most fruit. So they are all doing well. They have a lot of blossoms and soon I will have a lot of fruit, let's hope. So this is my ninth bed, the last bed in, in my garden. Um, as the garden matures, I will be adding more growing space like the shade garden and uh, under, underneath the fruit trees. But so far I couldn't be happier with the garden and I can't wait for the summer crops to start producing 
and I will keep you guys updated. I will be shooting another garden tour in August, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.